Well, right now, OPEC's decision to slash oil production is prompting calls for the U.S. to crack down on the world's largest oil suppliers. The White House saying it's weighing all options as several lawmakers renew proposals to hold Saudi Arabia and the other OPEC nations accountable, uh, potentially sue them for, quote unquote, price fixing. OPEC's production cut is expected to push gas prices up in the United States after falling pretty steadily from that record high over the summer. With me now is Democratic Congressman Rokana of California. Congressman, thank you very much. And you said this week, quote, the Saudis need to be dealt with harshly. What should the Biden administration do? What's harsh? Well, Poppy, we should ask them to reconsider their decision, give them five days. And if not, we should suspend the weapon sales. We're uh, providing them with the Patriot missile. We should suspend the spare parts and airplane logistics that we provide them. And we should pass uh, no PAC. Uh, the president can call on Congress to pass that, which would allow for antitrust lawsuits against the Saudi oil producers who are making 73% profit margins on these uh, barrels of oil. At this point, it does not appear that the White House is um, moving in any of those directions right now. Brian Deese, uh, the National Economic Council director, said yesterday, I have no announcements about any of that today when he was asked whether the Biden administration still believes Saudi Arabia deserves, for example, U.S. weaponry. Do you have confidence the administration is going to do any of the things you just laid out? I'll tell you that people in Congress are uh, itching and demanding that the administration should do something. I mean, you've seen that the price of the barrel of oil has gone up almost $90. Uh, this is going to hurt Americans in the pocketbook. And uh, the American people are wondering, we do so much for Saudi Arabia. We're responsible for almost 70 percent of their imports in defense. How are they doing this to us during an energy crisis? And they're strengthening Putin, because the reality is Putin doesn't have much margins on the barrel of oil. The Saudis do. They're doing this in part to help Putin, in part to make money. It's wrong. But what do you say to Americans, Congressman, who, who look at this and they look at what's happening right now with OPEC and they look at their gas prices that are going to go up once again, and they blame Democrats for consistently opposing more drilling of oil and more permitting in this country? Bobby, I would just share the facts. Uh, oil production is up under President Biden. It's almost 12 million barrels a day. It's uh, not quite at 2019 levels where it was 12.3 million, but it's higher than 2020 or 2021. It's projected to be at record pace in 2023, even more than the 2019 highs. So it's just not true that uh, oil production is enough, but we also need the oil from the global markets. Well, I didn't say that oil is not what, what I'm asking you is what other Americans are asking. And when they hear oil executives, as you know, they've testified before you who say, if you made permitting easier, if you allowed more drilling in this country, we could produce more in this country. Now, obviously, we have to consider the climate change impacts. That is huge and that is foremost. But looking at the pricing now and this huge amount of control that OPEC has over it, is it not true that allowing more drilling in this country and more easier permitting would have made a difference, would make a difference? Bobby, it's not in the short term, because I think even those oil executives would tell you that it's at least a two-year lag from that permitting. And we can debate whether we want to have long-term more infrastructure to increase production. I don't think long-term that's what we want. I think short-term we need an increase in production. And the biggest thing we can do in that is having an export ban. I mean, we're still uh, producing all this oil and uh, sending it overseas, exempt our European allies, but ban that. Uh, and uh, if there's short-term ways to increase production, many okay. of us are open to that. I would say that, you know, one of the downsides, even if you do exempt our European allies who need this oil right now, uh, that that could amplify global inflationary pressures. But, but you said you don't think, Congressman, that, that, that it is right to, to move on permitting in, in that way. I, I thought it was really interesting that just a few days ago, the Washington Post editorial board basically said Democrats are wrong on that when it comes to clean energy. Here's their argument. Quote, legislation that critics have unfairly characterized as a sop to big oil, but is in fact indispensable in the fight against climate change. If this country is to transition quickly to renewables and other non-polluting sources of energy, maintaining onerous rules on building out energy products, projects, puts renewables at a disadvantage relative to sources that have associated infrastructure built already. They say 
that Democrats who oppose, for example, Manchin's plan on this part were short-sighted and they didn't see the impact for renewables. Poppy, I agree with the Washington Post that we need to expedite permitting for renewables for transmission lines, but that's not what the permitting reform was. That, that reform would have uh, provided, uh, gone over frontline communities for fossil fuel infrastructure. So what I have said, and many of the climate groups have said, is let's have an expedited permitting bill on the transmission lines, uh, on solar, on wind, on batteries, mm -hmm. and we'd be for passing something like that. So finally, let me ask you this, because the, the average, we just looked, the average for gas prices in your home state of California this morning, 6.39 a gallon. Y yeah. You have said that you hear, and this is a quote from you, almost nonstop from your constituents about how high gas costs, and by the way, now it's going to go up. Are you concerned this is going to hurt your fellow Democrats in the midterms? I'm concerned it's going to hurt the American people. I mean, gas is too high and we need to do everything we can. We have the tools to bring it lower by demanding our leverage on the Saudis so that they produce and by uh, having restrictions on our exports. And yeah. that would significantly lower the price. But of course, it's going to be an issue uh, in the elections. Uh, and it's more importantly, it's an issue that uh, Americans are facing and people in my district are facing. Congressman Rokana, always appreciate you coming on this program. Thank you. Thank you, Poppy.